हेलो एंड वेलकम बैक टू दिस चैनल डियर स्टूडेंट्स दिस टॉपिक इज ऑर्थोगोनल फ्रीक्वेंसी डिवीजन मल्टीप्लेक्सिंग दैट इज ओ एफ डी ए इट इज वन ऑफ द मल्टीप्लेक्सिंग टेक्निक्स यूज फॉर सेल्युलर नेटवर्क वी विल डिस्कस वॉट इज द मोटिवेशन एंड वॉट इज द मल्टी कैरियर बेसिक्स मोटिवेशन मीन्स वाई टू यूज दिस ओ एफ डी एम सिस्टीम एंड सो ऑन before that we will discuss what is the meaning of single carrier system we know that uh, when you want to transmit the information which is in the form of bits then we need to use the modulation techniques we need to use some carrier signals and the data which you want to transmit should mix with carrier signal that means should be superimposed with the carrier signal and then it is transmitted through the particular channel now as the name indicates it is single carrier system that means only a single carrier is used there are no multiple carriers used in this system let us say b is the bandwidth of system we know that bandwidth is range of frequencies so b is the bandwidth now b is given as 2w where w is one sided bandwidth or w is also called the maximum frequency that's why a uh, bandwidth is b is equals to 2w because w is one sided so for two sided so we will get 2w now think like this we have to send different symbols ah before that since it is a single carrier system in case of single carrier one symbol is transmitted for entire bandwidth for example if we have different symbols like x0 x1 and we want to transmit it using single carrier sub system then let us assume that uh the time period required to transmit uh, the symbol x0 is from 0 to t after completion of this in the second uh, part x1 next symbol is transmitted say from 2 uh, t to 2t after that next symbol that is x of 2 will be transmitted from 2t to 3t and so on where every t here every time indicates or it is reciprocal of 1 by b very simple time is reciprocal of frequency so it is reciprocal of 1 by b that means in short every symbol is transmitted for entire bandwidth so <clears throat> a large amount of uh, bandwidth is required because each signal each symbol is occupying the full bandwidth now we will just discuss what will be the symbol time in this case so symbol time is basically the time required to transmit one symbol for the entire wavelength this symbol time is t which we have already discussed it is 1 by b because for the entire bandwidth one symbol is transmitted now if you want to calculate the symbol rate then we know that symbol rate or if you say uh, any frequency is basically reciprocal of time period likewise symbol rate is 1 by t so i will write the symbol rate as 1 by t which is equals to 1 upon 1 by b so symbol rate is same as the bandwidth that means this equation clearly indicates for entire bandwidth one symbol is transmitted this is the case of single carrier system next part is multi carrier system we will discuss the concept of multi carrier system just now we discussed the concept of single carrier system what we discussed one symbol is transmitted for entire bandwidth now as the name indicates multi carrier means many carriers are used let us say we will be using n sub carriers for entire bandwidth of b how to achieve this thing actually we want to use n sub carriers that means whatever data is available we have to divide we have to split the data into different parts and each part is transmitted by using a different carrier this is the conceptual diagram of a multi carrier sub system i have shown n different sub carriers let us say this is the total available bandwidth say this is point a this is point b from a to b whatever bandwidth is there that is the total available bandwidth i have divided the total available bandwidth 
uh, which I mean, which I uh, named as n subcarriers. So, as shown by these vertical arrows, there are n subcarriers. Now, the spacing between each subcarrier very simple. This center subcarrier I have shown it at zero. Next subcarrier is at b by n. Next is two b by n. Same is there at the negative side. So, spacing or separation between each subcarrier is. From this, it is very clear b by n minus 0, that is b by n. So, each subcarriers are spaced, separated by b by n. Now, consider <coughs> the frequency of ith subcarrier is denoted by fi. What is ith subcarrier? Ith means first, second, third, likewise, there are n subcarriers. So, I am considering fi is the frequency of ith subcarrier, which is given as i that is corresponding number of subcarrier into b by n. Now b is the total bandwidth, n is the number of subcarriers which we are used. For example, if total bandwidth is let us say 256 kilohertz and total number of subcarriers which we are using is 64, so we will get b by n is equal to 256 by 64 which is equal to 4, 4 kilohertz. So, uh, it indicates that the, there is a separation, separation between subcarriers is 4 kilohertz. Likewise, the subcarriers are separated from each other for the entire available bandwidth. Now, this is the equation of frequency for ith subcarrier. As I mentioned, ith means first, second, third and so on. Consider that xi is the data which is to be transmitted on the ith subcarrier. Now, the total symbol corresponding to this data xi and corresponding to ith subcarrier is given as xi uh, si is equal to xi xi means the actual data into e raised to j 2 pi f i t where f i is the frequency of that particular subcarrier this is the standard equation which represents si symbol corresponding to the data xi which you are transmitting uh, on on the ith subcarrier whose frequency is f i now, very simple, put this value of fi in this equation. So, you will get xi e raised to j 2 pi i b by n into t. So, in case of, make it make the thing simple. In case of multi-carrier system, each symbol is transmitted per each carrier and there are total n sub-carriers. Next part is, a block diagram of multi-carrier communication system. This upper part where I have written TX represents block diagram of the transmitter system. Now, at the input side, we have a data which is in the serial form. So, first block is convert this data into the parallel form by using serial to parallel conversion. Why to convert the data into parallel form? Very simple logic. We are using n subcarrier so there are n number of parallel uh, systems as such so we need to convert serial data into parallel form then bank of modulators are used what's the use of bank of modulators suppose i'm talking about the ith symbol then for a particular symbol a particular carrier must be assigned so for i symbol i need to assign ith number of subcarrier so this function is done by using a modulator block then last block is the summer as the name indicates it takes summation of all these uh, components and it generates a composite signal which is now ready for the transmission then this composite signal is transmitted through the channel if it is a wireless system it is transmitted through the free space usually this is the block diagram of the receiver side this composite signal which is transmitted is available at the receiver side first block is the repeater block actually repeater is uh, uh, is an antenna now this antenna performs the function of receiving the signal as well as amplifying the signal of course when the signal this composite signal is traveling through the channel the noise may get added in the system so at the receiver it captures the signal and amplifies the signal then demodulator block is used it performs as the name indicates it performs performs opposite operation to that of modulator 
Then last block is parallel to serial conversion. We know that original data which we wanted to transmit was in serial form and for our convenience we have uh, converted into the parallel form and then transmitted through the then transmitted a composite signal through the system. So last block is again converted into the original format. So we are using serial to par parallel conversion. The major advantages of a multi-carrier subsystem is that there is no inter-symbol interference ideally. In case of single carrier system, as we discussed, only one carrier is used for the transmission. So there are chances of inter-symbol interference. Next, we are getting a flat of fading because we are using n number of sub-carriers instead of using a sub only a single carrier and signal distortion is avoided. The major disadvantage of this system is uh, we need n or many number of complex modulations as well as a demodulator. So it, it is rather practically difficult to implement this complex type of system containing different modulators and demodulators. Next is the concept of OFDM, orthogonal frequency division multiplexing. Basically, in case of normal FDM, that is normal frequency division multiplexing, the entire available frequency band is divided into sub parts and each part is assigned a different frequency. Now, uh, you need to separate out. That means, suppose this is the total frequency band and I will say this is first frequency F1, second frequency f2 third frequency f3 and so on likewise the different frequency slots are made but there should not be any mixing uh, uh, between uh, the two bands so you need to provide guard bands like this between the consecutive frequency uh, slots that's why in case of normal or conventional fdm large amount of bandwidth is required but in case of orthogonal FDM you can have some kind of overlapping that means the required bandwidth will get reduced basically uh, before discussing this first we will discuss the concept of for, or meaning of orthogonality signals are orthogonal if they are mutually independent of each other in a specific time means they are not dependent on any other signal and do not interact with each other so in a particular time period the symbols or the signals are not interacting with each other and they are not dependent on each other now i have drawn a simplified diagram to uh, explain you the concept of orthogonality as i said this is extension of normal frequency division multiplexing but in frequency division multiplexing we need to make use of the guard bands here guard bands are not required there is overlapping as far as the time and frequency is concerned even though there is no mixing of signals <clears throat> that means there is no interference of signal for example i have shown three frequencies f1 f2 and f3 observe this uh, diagram carefully this part this uh, blue uh, the diagram which i have uh, made with blue ink is for f1 this is the maximum value of f1 where we have this this another black colored spectrum is for f2 at the maximum value of f1 we have null position minimum value of f2 I'm talking about this same technique this is the maximum value of f2 where i am getting null position of f3 likewise we can see <clears throat> there can be some kind of overlapping of the spectrum but the there won't be any mixing of data this is the basic concept of orthogonal system so major advantages comparing to fdm the amount in case of fdm which was requiring a large bandwidth the this requirement gets reduced by using this orthogonality the next part is ofdm transmitter and this another block diagram is for ofdm receiver we already discussed the concept of ofdm first we will discuss the block diagram of transmitter system these are the symbols which we want to uh, transmit using ofdm system <clears throat> First block is serial to parallel conversion. In earlier block diagram, we already discussed such type of blocks. We need to convert the serial data into the parallel form because we are using N subcarriers. Next is N point IFFT. IFFT stands for inverse fast Fourier transformation. 
here we are supposed to make use of the block modulator so instead of that just to avoid the complexity of the system n point inverse first Fourier transformer i fft is used which perform the function similar to the modulate modulator that means for the ith symbol we need to assign ith subcarrier and so on which we have already discussed in the uh, last part next is we need to convert the parallel data into the serial form see here first we have converted serial data into the parallel form just to perform the modulation function then again we are converting the parallel data into the serial form because uh, I will discuss this block later because we know that in case of this system OFDM system we are using n subcarrier so symbol rate is reduced by n compared to the single carrier system because this is multi carrier system in case of multi carrier system since we are using n subcarriers the symbol rate is reduced so there are chances that whenever the data is transmitting through the channel there can be inter symbol interference that is mixing of information to avoid this, some kind of coding is added that is CP coding, cyclic prefix coding insertion. So this block is used to perform this type of coding and for that we need a serial data. So here we are converting parallel data into the serial data. Then cyclic coding is added as well as this cyclic coding helps us to keep the signal orthogonal. We have already discussed the concept of orthogonal signal. Then the this data <coughs> from the transmitter is given to the channel. Data passes from the channel. This is the receiver end. So this is the data from the channel. First part is we need to remove this cyclic prefix coding which we have inserted just to avoid the inter symbol interference. So first block removes this cyclic coding. Next is serial to parallel conversion because we have to convert demodulation. Initially in the transmitter we have performed the modulation. Now we have to we have to perform demodulation. For that endpoint FFT is used. Fast Fourier transformation. It is reverse operation to that of IFFT. Do remember it like this. IFFT stands for modulation. FFT stands for demodulation. So after demodulation, the original data was in serial form. So we need the data, final data to be in the serial form. So we are performing parallel to serial conversion. So this is the basic block diagram of transmitter and receiver as far as the OFDM is uh, concerned. So dear students, that's it for today's session. Actually, this part is from unit number two for the subject cellular system. So thank you. Thanks a lot.